Welcome to the PNFL. I am your host, Mark Hill, and my co-host is Mitch Grawl. How you doing, Mitch? Fantastic. Hello, Do- hello. Doing awesome over here as well. So, we have come to the end of our season. We have had our Super Bowl game between the Cardinals and the Jets. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, Mitch, so how? let's talk about the game. Um, mm. Mm. Not exactly the game I think we were all looking forward to. Yeah, not exactly. Um, I will say that um, there, there's a reason why the Jets are the most dominant team in the league right now. Um, both teams played outstanding this season. Um, Cardinals were just chewing people up left and right. They had a couple losses there on the season, but for the most part, they were just um, going through and just stomping on everybody and until they got to that final game and hit that brick wall. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that brick wall, that brick wall, I think, was they're called the Jets pass defense because the fit Jets pass defense, I mean, it was already ranked number one in the league but going into the game. But, I mean, what, what, what a defensive performance. I mean, it was – a uh, golly, what three like three point four yards per pass attempt uh, for for the Cardinals? Uh, they they were sacked five times, two interceptions. Um, I think nine of like twenty nine pass. I mean, it was just that pass defense. Uh, that was that was that was eighty five Bears right there. That, that was that was rough. That was rough going if you were a Cardinal. Oh, yeah, that was rough, definitely. But, you know, the one thing that we talked about was look at where the Jets are with their passing. They had the number one pass defense. They had the number three rush defense. And, you know, we talked about that. If they're good and if you try to run, well, if you try to run, you're going to have a hard time trying to run. Throwing the ball – that's a tall, tall order right there to even try and attempt to um, to try to even throw the ball against them. I mean, they over the, during the regular season they had 17 interceptions. Uh, the opposing team, uh, their rating was at 67.4, uh, 37 sacks. So I mean, those guys, you know, is like where where do you try to breach that wall? You, you know. The passing was a problem. The rushing would have been the best way to go, but really, you know, it's there was nowhere to go. And uh, by looking at the looking at the game stats as well, uh, from looking at the Cardinals, uh, let's see: um, Sam Darnold, 144 yards uh, in the air, two interceptions, one touchdown. Uh, rushing, what was it? Um, what 60 yards rushing total? Uh, Anthony McFarland only had three, what was it, three carries uh, for 39 yards. And after that, they just shut it down. After that, it was six yards for Donald. Carrion Johnson had eight yards rushing. Javante Williams had five yards rushing. You're not going to win like that. Straight straight up, you're not going to win like that. Oh, did I lose you? No, you did not. No, just a little technical difficulty here. I was just trying to say that even with New York, you know, their field goal kicker was three for three. And whenever you get a, a kicker to go three for three in the PNFL, you know it's going to be a good day. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So um, I will say for both coaches, um, they've had – both of them had outstanding seasons. Um, the Jets – there's a reason why they are the top team in the league, and they've proven it again. But the Cardinals are no slouch either. I think that they will definitely bounce back uh, for next season. And hopefully, I think the talent in the league as a whole, as these coaches are coming up, they may be able to climb it a little bit, let, you know, climb that ladder a little bit more. You have some young, hungry coaches out there, and you can see it during the regular season. And I think next season, they're going to take another leap forward. No, no, no. Get it right. 
another step forward. <laughs> hey, you know what? They're 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 moving in the right direction, and I tell you what, uh, for for Coach Murph, their fifth Super Bowl title, uh, and uh, so that's one for the thumb, right? So one for the thumb there for for old Murph, and um, you know you know for old Coach Tucker, you know this is the first time he's had to taste defeat in the Super Bowl, and I'm sure that he does not like that taste, and so I expect him to be right back in there and uh going for it in uh in 20 uh in 2041 yeah that's right because in the uh big game they are now three is it three and one yeah they're three and one now yeah yeah so yeah, yeah well i don't know is it time to start start calling the jets title town i don't know you gotta remember i mean the uh, all-time leading coach in Super Bowl wins is old Rich uh, Colasino with 18. So uh, maybe when uh, Murph gets up in the double digits, we'll start thinking about that. Oh, that's right, 18. Yeah, that's titled. Yeah, so it's like, hold yeah, up, pump, so, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Yeah. I came into the, I didn't, I haven't, I've only been in the league for four seasons, so yeah, yeah, I didn't know that way back then, way back when, oh, what yeah. happened back in that, back in the day. You know, back when they were wearing leather helmets and NFL, <laughs> yeah, he, he, you know, Rich was winning all those titles. Uh, not, not the leather helmets. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> That is savage. That is savage. So, uh, again, as we are, uh, again, for all the coaches out there, it was a good season. Uh, congratulations to all the playoff teams. Congratulations to the two teams that made it to the big game. And congratulations to the winner, who is now um, Definitely setting the standard, and that is Coach Murph. But again, Coach Tucker, yep. great job this season. Uh-huh. So, uh, as we wrap that up, we got to go to our, I don't know if I want to call it the M Memoriam, um, but um, we have two coaches that are stepping down after playing the. Um, uh, extended seasons or multiple uh, seasons in the league. Um, do you want to go ahead and talk about those two coaches? Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's a sad day indeed when we've got both Coach uh, Demuru and uh, Coach uh, Kimball uh, stepping down, uh, going and, and taking their um, taking their time and going to somewhere, I'm sure, tropical and spending some time in retirement. You know, uh, old Walt there with Green Bay, he is you know, the seventh uh, highest win total in PNFL history. Uh, uh, and uh, actually, at one time, uh, I think, was uh, stepped in as, as commissioner for part of the time. And so, definitely a great uh, contributor to the PNFL for many, many years. And so, Walt, we, we wish you the best and hope, uh, hope maybe this is just going to be a uh, maybe a one year. Uh, uh, rest and maybe you'll get you'll, you'll come right back uh, and and join uh, join up with us. And then Dan there, you know, with Cincinnati. Prior to that, you know, uh, big Seattle uh, coach in C F for Seattle before you took it over. And uh, he is the eleventh uh, highest has the eleventh highest win total in PNFL history. And um, you know, uh, he, he was always fun to play against. Uh, while I'll never uh, forget. Uh, uh, the classic game uh, where uh, Landry Jones threw three interceptions uh, to Dan's uh, Seattle Seahawks. I think two of them were in the end zone, and, I, and so uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of fun uh, laughing about that one for a few seasons. But uh, uh, I'm sure Dan, uh, will, you know, uh, will will have a relapse and want to come back and join the league again at some point. But we wish him the best. Yes, we definitely do wish him the best. So, um, for those coaches out there, that is the Green Bay team and the Cincinnati team that is open. So, if you know anyone that's interested in coming in and joining the league, definitely have them get in contact with the commish and um, see if we can go ahead and bring them into the fold and uh, get them going. Or, uh, and some of those people that are outside of the league um, on Facebook that's listening in uh, through the uh, Football Pro 
uh, group page. If you're interested in joining the league, definitely reach out to the commission. Uh, go into the pnfl.biz website, and you'll see everything that we have there. Uh, we are trying to add a little twist to it. We have our newspaper. We have the podcast show kicking off. A great co-host here with me to keep things going. Um, you know, so definitely, if you guys are interested, reach out. We would love to have you join the league. So, uh, departing coaches now. End of the season, we have our coaches that are gone. Uh, one of the things that's been coming up along the forum lately has been some discussions uh, about some of the team realignments. I know that we do have a couple teams that are um, changing divisions um, or um, changing conferences. And we're going to go over a couple of those and some of the information on the forum about what some of the coaches ideas are about that so um yeah. you want to go ahead and take the point on that one yeah well i'll tell you yeah if you if you have not gone on to the forum here this week I, I encourage you to go out there because there are no less than 40 replies to a post uh from jerry around 2041 realignment and i tell you there are some Pretty interesting suggestions out there as far as how we should realign. Probably the most interesting one uh, is uh, someone recommended that we have, uh, I think, the team with the two worst records or four worst records uh, basically uh, draft who their uh, uh, um, divisional opponents would be. (laughs) So that's uh, definitely a uh, out-of-the-box thinking on that one, but it seems as if right now um, that there's a prevailing thought on um, trying to keep it somewhat simple. And I know that, um, you know, uh, Coach Hoover, you know, uh, currently of Philadelphia, soon to be of Indianapolis, um, that there's talk of maybe moving him uh, and his team over to the AFC, uh, maybe moving to the AFC East. Uh, and we already know that. Um, you know, go Coach Dean there in Kansas City slash Atlanta uh, is moving his team and requesting to go to the NFC. So there's a thought of moving him and the uh, soon-to-be Falcons to the NFC East. Uh, but then we've got that opening, you know, in Green Bay and Cincinnati. So uh, there's some thought of uh, moving Cincinnati to uh, the AFC West so that Indianapolis can take their spot. Uh, there's talk of moving Green Bay and changing their name. So there's all kinds of scenarios uh, that are flying around out there. I don't, I don't know where our uh, leadership is going to land, but uh, I, I just say, just make sure that I get to play Jerry every year. You can put me in any division you want to put me in. So just want to have make sure he's there, huh? At least get That's that one right. game in. Um, That's right. You know, as I'm looking at some of these realignments here, and I know there's some teams that are going to be changing. Um, you know, I, I had a conversation with the commission a while, um, maybe like five, six weeks ago. It was like, man, it'd be kind of nice if we could expand it. But he was like, no, I don't think we're going to expand it from the 18 teams. Um, but looking for the realignment, I'm I'm kind of um, – I kind of like the, the alignment the way it is right now. Um, it would be nice if we could have – five teams in each division instead of, uh, what is it, uh, a couple fives and then a four, uh, you know, maybe add a couple more teams in there. But I think the alignment, it should stay the way it is, in, in my opinion. I I kind of like seeing those rivalries that you've built up over the seasons that, I mean, because for me personally, you know, I finally beat Oakland this year, so I want to have that come back again. <laughs> The L.A., the Cincy, you know, I want to keep those those rivalries going. But I understand teams, you know, coaches want to kind of move over and stuff. But I'm I'm kind of like a purist. I like to keep the league, keep the yeah. line with the way it is. Well, I'm yeah. I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss playing, you know, Dean twice a year because I always look forward to having those two victories. So um, <laughs> we'll see what happens next year. Mm-mm. That is savage. <laughs> that is savage right there. So, uh, I think of it like this. You like getting those two wins. I already know I'm going to get two wins from Oakland next season. So, I mean, that's <laughs> I already I already put those in the win column. Boom, I already got those. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. 
right. You saw that I cut my punter, so uh, you think I'm going to be vulnerable on the special teams. Hey, hey, hey you, you got hey, It's all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. Everybody knows that. If you got one area that's slacking, that's, that's where that weakness is. I'm going to try and exploit that weakness right there. Ah, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I hear you, but yeah, that that is it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I hope that we, um, I hope we keep it simple like you. You know, I don't, I you know, I hope we don't end up with a you know half the division of the divisions with half NFC teams, half AFC teams. But at the end of the day, um, I'm just ready for week one to get here. So yeah, we'll see what happens. it seems like. Soon as the soon as the playoffs come about, and if you're not in the playoffs, you're just like, let's just get through this. I want to start over again because it's like. You have that taste in your mouth like, oh, man, if I had – because I know I looked at my record and it was like, oh, man, just one of these plays over here. Like the yep. first, I don't know, five or six games or something like that, I'm just like, ah. The ones mm-hmm. I lost early, I was like, oh, man, if I would have did this, I would have had that one or this or would have had that one. So, yeah, I'm ready to to redeem myself, so to say. Oh. So uh, yeah. for those coaches out there, for the realignment, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it on the forum yet – Go to the forum from the main web page. Put your comments in there. Uh, that's what it's there for, to get the word out. Um, I'm probably going to be posting some stuff on there as well. So, um, you know, in order to make the league better, you got to speak up and have something to say. And um, that's what the commission, the assistant commission, has it all opened up for. So um, use the resources that are there. Uh, moving over to the next item. We have player cuts. Uh, as yeah. far as the player cuts coming up, uh, you guys have until the ending of Sunday to get it out there and uh, get yourselves, uh, get your players cut. If not, the commission will find players to cut for you, and it may not be the players that you want to be cut. So you may have your starters getting cut instead of your, uh, your practice squad guys. So um, I... I'm guilty of it as well. I have to get my my numbers down, so uh, we got to take a look at that and look at your numbers. And uh, I believe the spreadsheet files has already been sent out as well, correct? Yeah. So um, I think you have. Uh, oh, you know what? There was a question I was reading the emails, and I'll have you go ahead and uh, answer this. So one of the yeah. questions were, uh, or one of the questions was. Um, what does it mean if there's the player and there's a red box and the player with the green box, I think a dark green and a light green. Can you explain yeah. that to those coaches? Yeah. So the red box, uh, that means that the player failed their physical last year. So they're, they're in the, um, that uh, age range where they'd have to pass the physical uh, to keep them from aging. So if they have the red box, that means they are going to age uh, via the game, which, you know, those older players, some are going to retire, some are going to see a major drop-off in their ratings. The dark green box, in my understanding, that means that the player is, you know, in that uh, range where they would have to um, pass a physical to stay, uh, to stay uh, anti-age. If they have that dark green, that means they've passed their physical uh, and so they're, you know, going to be okay going into the next year, but they got to pass the physical again uh, to uh, hopefully, you know, keep the following year. And if they're light green, that just means they've hit the uh, the stage where they're auto, um, they're auto uh, anti-aged. Uh, but obviously, that means they're getting close to, uh, you know, getting close to that part where, uh, you know, it, it might not be automatic anymore. So that that's the uh, difference in those uh, different colors. Okay, so there you go, guys. For those that have been asking uh, about that, there's plenty of information on that um, spreadsheet that the commission sent out. I would definitely uh, encourage you guys to take a look at it and uh, review the information that is there. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the commission um, or you just post it on the forum. Uh, Actually, the best way to do it, just post it on the forum. You'll get someone to respond. So I don't want the commission to say, oh, man, you guys mentioned me enough times and all of a sudden I'm getting my emails flooded. So post it on the forum and um, definitely somebody will respond to it. Yeah. Well, one thing you mentioned, you know, those cuts. And I tell you, if uh, 
if you haven't gone out and looked at the cuts um, uh, section of the forum, there are some interesting uh, names that are uh, being cut right now. You know, I'm, I'm looking there. The 49ers are parting ways with Deshaun Watson. Uh, you know, uh, that's uh, you no. Know, he's still got some uh, some pretty uh, good ratings out there, but uh, that, that's a pretty interesting one. Yeah, you, know, you look at Detroit. You know, I think uh, we talked about this pre-show. They cut Gardner Minshew, who's a pretty talented quarterback for. Um, it was the you know, stash. Good, uh, it was the yeah, mustache. You know, I mean, he's a pretty talented quarterback. It'd be a solid backup, uh, at least for some of the top teams out there. Um, you look out at some of these other, uh, you know, big cuts. You know, I see some some other named players. You know, I think, uh, uh, gosh, uh, where to go? Like New Orleans. You know, they they cut quite a few and. Um, there's a you know a J.K. Dobbins. You look at him and you kind of go, well, he doesn't look all that great. But um, you know when you compare him to some of those younger running backs, especially in potential, you know another few years he's going to be a one of the higher rated running backs out there. So uh, pretty interesting. Some of these players that are being cut um, out there along uh, along the board here. Yes, agree. Now, if we can expand this just a little bit, um, yeah. as far as, and I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking is, and it's for my information, but also for the coach's information as well, when, yeah. in just a general overview, when you're looking at what type of players to cut, what yeah. do you think is some of the criteria? I mean, I know some people say, well, I look at all the numbers going across the board. Some people have a formula that counts all the numbers, you know, add up all the attributes and then have that filtered out to look at all the all the players in their squad to figure out, okay, these players are doing this. You know, here's where their numbers are, their actuals, their potentials. Some will take yep. a look at what their stats were for the season. So there's all different kinds of ideas out there floating. So yeah. what do you, for a general rule, what do you think is yeah. the general rule to making that determination of who you keep and who you cut? Yeah, well, I mean, I think nowadays, I know for me, the first thing I looked at was who are all my players with the red, uh, with the red box, <laughs> you know, who didn't pass a physical, because uh, those those were pretty much an automatic. They're going to get cut, uh, and then from there, uh, I looked at uh, I looked at the uh, players who their contract was out, and uh, compared that to both the age of the player and the uh, depth I had at that position, and was it going to be worth, you know, signing that player, um, you know, with points. Um, based on their age and the other players I had at their position. So those were kind of the, I guess you could say, the three factors I looked at uh, the most. Okay, and I would have to agree with that as well. Um, I don't know. I know that there's – I have about four players I know I want to cut. Um, the rest of them I'm going to take a look at and see um, – Look at what their stats are and what they're doing. I think last season I made some cuts and there were some questionable ones out. And I remember I got the the, the call from the commission like, "Hey, what are you doing over there? You know, <laughs> what are you what are, you know are are you really looking at your roster? Are you look look at these numbers?" So I'm definitely making sure that um, I'm going to take a much closer look. Uh, clearly, I did something right because I played much better this season. So. Uh, yeah. Definitely yeah, I, I've, I've received a few of those phone calls in the past when I first started back with the league. They, are you sure you want to put your number one draft pick on your practice squad? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Are you, do you really want to do that? <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, I, I think by looking at the game as a whole, and this is the past history for me. I started off in the AAFL league from way back when. I think we have a couple coaches in the league now that played back in the AFL and their whole scenario was different. I believe early on, we didn't even get to see the potentials or the, uh, we just saw the actuals for the players and then they opened up to show the potentials. And then there was a couple other th different things that we did, but nothing to the level of what we're doing here where you have, you have to be a GM right now. You got to look at the players, their numbers their stats. You have to, factor in all these things and then figure out how many points you want to allocate and make sure you have enough points left over for um, to make sure your whole team is covered for the ones that are under contract 
Then once you go through all that, then you got to find out who am I going to sign in free agency. Then you got to find out who am I going to draft. And so it's all these different things. It's, it's This is kind of like your second season, in my opinion, because yeah. you got that one season where you're actually playing the games. Now you got the second one. And you got to talk to other coaches about the draft. Do you want to yeah. trade picks or not? Well, another thing, too, and the thing about from a decision standpoint on making cuts, you know, if you re-sign a player, right, you got to pay what two and a half points to get uh, what a one-year contract, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if you cut a player and you sign them back for one point, you get a three-year contract. And so sometimes it's okay. Do I take the risk on cutting this player, even though I, I want to keep them, but maybe my points are a little bit low. So do I cut them? And the hope that I can sign them for under two and a half points and get them for three years versus sign them for two and a half points and only get them for a year. You know, and so uh, depending on what your situation is, that's why you look at, you know, with Detroit, who has all of those points, uh, you know, how did they get all those points? Uh, something tells me that besides some trades and maybe not signing some play, that uh, he's James has probably done a great job, or should I say Coach Bloomer has done a great job, of um, you know uh, cutting players and signing them back at lower point rates than what some of us have been just resigning. So uh, it, it, there's a little bit of that too that you have to think about. Yeah, you know what? I think what we might do on the show, um, since it's our first time doing this, and um, I still find myself being stuck on that, maybe we can look at dedicating the show. Um, I don't know, just something just thinking off the top of my head yeah. to work on that to try to figure it out because I, I you know a couple things that I thought about was a show to cover this to cover the draft the free agency maybe de- designing plays to try to help bring some of these coaches up that are just trying to get themselves started to make the league more competitive and saying if everyone is kind of not on the same playing field but having that same knowledge out there because everyone's knowledge is going to be a little bit different mm-hmm but, yeah, yeah. Def- definitely on that, uh, looking at these players because, again, you don't want to get that message from that coach, from the commission saying, are you sure you want to cut that guy? <laughs> you know, he told me, he was like, why are you trying to get rid of that receiver? He's he's in the top ten. <laughs> it's like, oh, 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 wait a minute, mistake, mistake, mistake. He's like, yeah. Like, top ten of what, my team? No, <laughs> the league. Oh, oh, no, my receiver, oh, the, the, the time I did that, he was a top ten uh, receiver, no, he was a top tight end. That's what it was, one of the top tight ends. And I think there was a receiver that was like top fifteen. And he's like, "What are you looking at?" And I'm like, "Well, the, the guy's kind of slow." And he's like, "You want to keep that guy? Trust me, you want to keep him." It's like, "Oh, okay." And so yeah, so I kind of fumbled around on it a little bit, but um, yeah. but yeah, those are some of the things that we have coming up. So. Um, definitely take a look at the forum. Uh, look at some of those options that are there on the forum. Um, I don't know. We're not doing. They're not doing trades yet, or or trading um, draft picks or anything. So. Um, oh yeah, yeah. There's there's some trades going on right now. I think actually. Uh, oh yeah, Kansas. Uh, going on. Yeah, yeah, Chicago and Kansas. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, well, you know, Chicago, well, Chicago and Atlanta. Yeah, they've already. Uh, Made a trade, you know, tied in there for a for a point and a half. You got, you know, that massive, I don't even know what you call it, relocation, the 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 U-Haul trade between Detroit and Atlanta going on. I, I can't, even, I don't even know how Rich is going to get that completed. <laughs> um, uh. You got Chicago and Detroit. Uh, Chicago sent a draft pick uh, for a cornerback um, over there. So. Um, you know, and th- those who haven't seen this yet, uh, Detroit is looking to uh, dump a lot of players for some late round draft picks. So uh, go check out the forum if you haven't done so yet. A lot of players uh, out there. In fact, it uh, looks like um, Jalen Hurts, you know, uh, quarterback that led his team to the championship uh, in the NFC is on the block, too. So. Um, yeah, no, no, uh, no one's safe in Detroit other than I think that one uh, that one linebacker, um, but they've got. But um, yeah, you know they pretty much yeah. opened the whole floodgates up. So 
Um, no. Yeah, I'm seeing right now they've only been, uh, let's see, we got the announcement of the trades open. There's like only three trades that are coming in so far. Um, mm-hmm. Chicago, Detroit, uh, Detroit, Kansas City, and then Chicago, Kansas City, soon to be Atlanta. So mm-hmm. um, those options are out there. So definitely take a look at those things, guys, and uh, definitely get involved. The only way we can make the league better is if we all get involved and um, try to get that passion of That's why um, Mitch and I are doing what we're doing to try to contribute to the league, to drum up some excitement about the league. Right, right. We might not be able to win championships, but we'll at least try to entertain you. No, oh, bite your tongue, man. I'm winning the championship next year. I'm putting it out there. Jets, I'm coming for you, coach. I'm coming for you, coach. I'm already getting my troops ready so we can go ahead and break into your to your safe and uh, get your files out of there and get your playbook. So we're coming. You can you can run, but you can't hide. Now watch him and watch me just well, get slaughtered. He's well, gonna be- <laughs> hey, well, if if well if he can if he can run but he can't hide, well, Seattle can run but he can't pass. So it's all hey, good. hey, 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 <laughs> play nice, play nice. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, are working on that. The, I already told you. I'm working. The same boat, so I'm working on the good. cut and shoot next season. So, oh, okay. uh huh. So I, I, I'm getting some plays together for the cut and shoot, or the chuck okay. and duck. So, all right, guys. As we are coming to wrap up this show, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I, I must say, um, on a side note, thank you, Mitch, for uh, jumping in on the show when I started getting back into this. I didn't know how I was going to go and. Definitely, you are a great co-host in pre-production, during production, and post-production. So, thank well, you, Coach. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, being the great producer and host. So, uh, it's a good time. Good time. Uh, yep, and I'm thinking that next season will get better. Uh, you know, we're in uh, we're crawling, and pretty soon during the off season, we'll go from crawling to being in the walker, and then the next season starts. We'll be up. Walking and then getting ready to run. So, and uh, anything you got to say, Coach, before we call it a day and sign off for this episode? Of course. Let's get it. <laughs>